So this mini lecture is about the misleading nature of relative humidity. Um, so most of us know that in the popular press, when we turn on the weather channel, when we open our weather app, um, when the news comes on, uh, the, the weather segment of the news comes on, humidity is almost always presented as, as a relative humidity, always in terms of percent. Um, just to demonstrate this, I went to the weather channel and I grabbed uh, the weather, um, the current weather in Boise. Um, and this is this is what you see, right? This is a quick summary. So we see that the the weather here, the temperature is 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the high for today um, was we already passed it, but the low is was 42. Um, here's the wind speed. Uh, here's the pressure, and uh, here is that humidity that I mentioned, right? So um, if I um, so here is the humidity right here, right in percentage, okay, and that is a little bit misleading because as the name implies, it is a relative humidity. And so that should prompt us to ask relative to what, right? So if something is relative to something, that always means that you're taking a ratio, right? You're you're taking something and dividing by the, the total size to get a relative number. And if we think about that conceptually in terms of relative humidity, um, all that means is that the, the relative humidity must be equal to um, the ratio of how humid it currently is, however we measure that, divided by how humid it could be, and times 100% to get it in, in percentage terms. Um, so that begs the question then, well, how humid could it be and how would we know that? Um, so this gets us to three really important equations that describe the state of an air parcel and its humidity, uh, its temperature, and its pressure, right? So if we know it's, its temperature, its humidity, and its pressure, we understand uh, how much water that parcel can contain, okay? So these three important relationships are as follows. And, and if you see, we'll show how they tie into one another. Um, so... Uh, the three relationships are the, the Clausius-Clapeyron relationship. Um, Clausius-Clapeyron was a, a set of famous thermodynamicists that were French in the 1800s that came up with this relationship. It tells us um, this uh, saturation vapor pressure as a function of the air temperature. All of these terms will be on the next slide, and I'm going to pause so that you have time to look at them and make sure that you understand their definition and also importantly what the units are um, for these equations. So um, this is the saturation um, the saturation vapor pressure. It is an exponential function of the, the air temperature in degrees Celsius. Um, it's important to understand that this is a, an important exponential relationship. Um, that the importance of that will become clear when we do a couple of exercises. Um, but you might sort of want to press pause here and think about what the shape of the exponential curve is and, and what happens to saturation vapor pressure as you increase uh, the, the air temperature. Okay, our second important equation here comes effectively from the ideal gas law. Uh, we won't go through the, the, the derivation of how we get this relationship, but what it basically says is uh, it gives us the specific humidity as a function of E, the actual vapor pressure, and the air pressure. Okay, and this constant um, comes from the, the relative gas constants of, of water vapor and um, dry air, basically. And then um, the, the final equation that's important is the relative humidity equation. And, and it tells us that the relative humidity is equal to the actual vapor pressure divided by the saturation vapor pressure and times 100% here. So I'm going to um, real quick show you how these terms are, are linked, right? So we um, let me erase the pen that's there and uh, let's show how these equations link t together. Okay, so here is my saturation vapor pressure, right? And that's also in this equation right here, right? So these two equations are linked to one another, okay? And I'll use a different pen color here. Let's use uh, blue. And my actual vapor pressure here is 
um, equal to, right, so these two equations are, are linked as well. Um, and just to reiterate my, my point before, right, so if we know the air temperature, if we know the air pressure, and if somebody gives us the relative humidity, then we can solve for any of these other terms. And the one that we're actually going to be solving for is this um, specific humidity, right? This tells us how much water is in the air um, on, a, on a mass unit basis. And um, we'll see that definition in the next slide. So here is the a table that's defining all of those terms. I'm going to point out uh, um, a couple imp of important things here. I'm also going to um, just, uh, I'm going to pause on this slide and make sure that you have time to read this. I'm not going to read all of the terms for you here. I'm just going to leave them up, but I will point out a couple of important things here. So um, what we care about in terms of, you know, when we ask about, well, what is the, the actual humidity in the air? How much water is the air holding? That is this Q here, and that is um, sometimes referred to as the specific humidity. Um, you'll hear to some folks refer to it as the, the so-called mixing ratio. Um, and that is the, the mass of water vapor in the air divided by the mass of, of total air, right? So um, if you have one kilogram of air, right, the, the mixing ratio will tell you how many kilograms of, of water um, water vapor there is in that parcel. Okay. All right. Uh, the other things to note here before I silence myself for just a few seconds, make sure that you understand the units here because the units are, are very important in terms of um, making sure that, that we get the right answer. Okay, so I'll leave this up so that you have time to read it. Okay, so let's get back to our, our question. Um, so if we bring back up this summary and we look at the numbers that are in there, we can ask ourselves, well, how humid can it be? Um, and so again, let's make sure that we have all the numbers that we need before proceeding on to do any calculations. Um, here is the air temperature. So we have that, we need to convert it to um, degrees Celsius this is degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I will do the conversion for you. Um, we have the air pressure. Um, I could go on and on about the units here. The units here are inches of mercury, right? So this is um, using something called a, a mercury manometer to measure the air pressure. Um, that's a that's a very weird unit. Um, it's actually what they use in aviation. So if you're a pilot, um, this is what your altimeter number is. Um, uh, in, in meteorology circles, and in, in the, the SI unit is almost always in units of, of kilopascal. So we'll need to convert that as well. Um, and then we have our relative humidity here, right? So we can calculate um, actually how much water is in the air um, out outside in Boise right now. We have all of the numbers that we need. Okay, so this is a recipe for how we're going to go about doing that. I'm going to review the steps, okay, um, and then I am I'm going to go on to the next slide where we will actually go through this calculation with those converted values um, from the weather report in Boise. So, okay, so step one, 
um, we are going to calculate the vapor, the saturation vapor pressure, that is the, the pressure that the water vapor would exert on every meter cubed of air if it was saturated, that is if the relative humidity was 100% using our Clausius-Clapeyron relationship. Okay, so this this basically asks, okay, in, in sort of a in terms of vapor pressures, which if you're in chemistry right now, um, you probably talk a lot about um, vapor pressures and things like Dalton's law. Um, so this is where this becomes important in hydrology. Um, so we're going to calculate basically the maximum value that um, that uh, the the vapor pressure could be if the air was saturated at um, at the temperature that we're given um, in degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's step one. Figure out E sat, the saturation vapor pressure. Okay, step two. All right, now that we have the saturation vapor pressure, okay, so we have this from our first step. Okay, we also have the relative humidity because we measured that. We were given that by the weather the weather channel. We can now calculate the actual vapor pressure, right? The the the, the pressure that water vapor in the atmosphere right at this very second is exerting um, relative to all other gases, right? So this is this is the the uh, the vapor pressure of of water vapor in the air. Okay, so the next step is to use that ideal gas law, right, um, with the measured pressure. So um, step two is going to give us E here. And again, P was measured, right? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and write what we have is measured. So this is measured, this is measured, this is measured, and everything else we can calculate, right, as a straightforward set of steps, okay? All right, so there's our recipe, and once we have that, um, we have this magical quantity here. The specific humidity or the mixing ratio. Okay, so on the next slide, we're going to go through these calculations for those measured quantities out there in Boise right now. Okay, so right here on the slide, what we have is, is just... Um, these steps written out again and the equations um, to keep here basically so that I can see them um, and I can actually use them with, with actual numbers. I'm gonna go through the calculation right now um, and we're just going to go through step by step. Um, down in the bottom here, um, I've, I went ahead and took all of those measured quantities um, from the the weather the weather channel, and I converted the air temperature, which I think was 48 degrees Fahrenheit, and that turns out to be about 8.9 degrees Celsius. The relative humidity stays the same; it was 39%. Uh, the air pressure um, was 30 inches of mercury. That corresponds to um, 101.6 kPa. And just a heads up: this is um, this is like a spot on constant value, if we were to assume um, globally constant values of um, air pressure in the world, this is pretty much the number we would assume for sort of sea level. So um, we're getting actually, you know, a, a, a pretty ideal kind of set of numbers right here. Okay. So, okay. So let's go ahead and proceed to, to do this calculation. So I'm going to change my pen color here, I think, to maybe black so it's not so obnoxious. Okay, so, all right, so the first thing we do is we're, we're going to plug in this air temperature here. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 0 0.611 times the exponential of 17.3 times 8.9 divided by uh, 8.9 plus 237.3. Okay, let me bring up my calculator to do those numbers. Okay, so if I bring this in here, uh, 17. 
8.3 times 8.9 equals, so this is going to equal 153.97 over and say clear uh, 8.9 plus 237.3 that's 246 oops 246.2. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and, and do that equation. All right. So um, if we clear that out again. All right. So um, this would be uh, 153.97 divided by 246.2 um, equals, and if we take the exponential of that, um, we get 1.86. So this is 0 0.611 times 1.87, let's call it. And that equals, we'll multiply that times 0 0.611 equals 1.14. 1, 1.14 kPa. Okay, so that's our answer from step one. Now on to step two. Okay, so if the relative humidity is 39%, 39%, that equals the actual vapor pressure. That's what we want to calculate. Our saturation vapor pressure is what we just calculated. So that's 1.14 kPa. Okay, so uh, times 100, oops. So if we rearrange that, if we divide both sides by 100, right, um, we get uh, 0 0.39 equals E over 1.14 kPa. So that means E is equal to 0 0.39 times 1.14 kPa. And that would give us a value of, um, so we still have this up, right? So all I have to do is multiply this by, well, let's, clear this out anyway. Okay, so 0 0.39 times 1.14 is 0.44. Okay, so this is E is equal to 0 0.44 kPa, right? So that is our actual vapor pressure, okay? All right, so finally, um, what we wanna do is calculate this um, uh, this mixing ratio, okay? So, um, so we just are gonna plug this value of E in here, right? So this is just gonna equal 0 0.622 times E is 0. 4, 4 kPa divided by 101.6. And again, that's in units of kPa. 
So um, these cancel out, these pressures cancel out. Um, the, the associated units in here, the 0.622 gets us from, um, this kind of represents the, the difference in the molecular weight of water vapor versus um, dry air. So, and, and that's embedded in the gas constants. And so the, the units that fall out here are, are kilograms per kilogram or, or gram per gram. It's, a, it's a, uh, um, a dimensionless, but a mass per mass measure. Okay, so, all right, so let's find that calculator again. Okay, let's drag it in here. So if we clear, we do 0 0.622 times 0 0.44. And we, div uh, so what's that equal to 0.27? And we divide that by 101.6 kPa. That is something very small. Okay, so um, Q say Q is equal to, what was that number again? 0 0.0027, let's call it point zero 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 two seven kilograms per kilogram. Okay. Oftentimes, because that, because we're dealing with, with such small quantities with specific humidity or mixing ratio, um, we can multiply this by a thousand, right? If I multiply this by a thousand milligrams per kilogram, or sorry, thousand grams, let me erase that just to be clear. Okay. So um, grams per kilogram, there's 1,000 grams per every kilogram. That gets us to a number that um, is a little bit more readable, that doesn't have so many zeros and isn't quite so error prone. So if I bring in my calculator again and I multiply that number by 1,000, uh, we get 2.7 basically. So um, another way of reporting this, right? These are the same numbers just reported with slightly different units. It's 2.7 grams of water vapor per kilogram. Okay. All right. So this is what we would consider our, our final answer here. Um, and that seems about right, right? Um, if you if you have a box of air um, that weighs about a kilogram, right? So it's actually a, a fairly big sized box to get that much air to weigh a kilogram, about 2.7 grams of that is going to be water vapor, right? So um, that that kind of makes sense, right? Like, you know, um, we wouldn't expect all of it to be water vapor. We wouldn't expect that to be zero. Um, but Q represents um, how much mass there is of water vapor in every kilogram. Okay, so one last thing. Um, let's ask ourselves, uh, how humid could it be in absolute terms? And um, to get that right, we would just calculate that mixing ratio under the assumption that instead of the actual vapor pressure, we were using the value of the vapor pressure at saturation. Okay, so if we go back to the previous slide um, and we look, that was this value of ESAT, 1.14 kPa. So I'm going to carry that over ESAT. Whoops. Let's erase that. The pen got stuck. Okay. All right, so ESAT. 1.14 kPa. So how, how, how much water vapor could the air actually hold if it was saturated? Well, all we have to do is, is replace this E here with this value of saturation, right? So we might call this QSAT, the specific humidity of saturation is equal to 0 0.622 times 1.14 kPa over uh, 101.6 kPa. Okay, so let's bring back the calculator and rerun those numbers. So clear, so 0 0.622 times 1.14 and divide that by uh, 101.6 
um, point zero zero six. Well, let's call it zero zero seven. So that is equal to zero point zero zero seven zero kilograms per kilogram, or multiplying that by a thousand, right? So uh, one, two, three um, gives us about seven grams per kilograms at saturation. Okay. So if the air were completely saturated, this is how much water vapor it could hold. Okay. So that's it on the, the, um, the misleading nature of relative humidity that's reported, right? So the key inference that you should have here is that if you have the relative humidity, um, you don't actually know how much water vapor the air is holding unless somebody actually tells you at a minimum the temperature of the air um, and B, probably the the air pressure. You could assume that the air pressure was constant. That's something that we commonly do. That's often not a bad assumption. Um, uh, the air pressure is more constant than the air temperature is, um, but the humidity is exceptionally sensitive to that temperature number. So um, if somebody just tells you what the what the relative humidity is and they ask you well, how much how much actual water is in the air, your first question should be, what's the temperature of the air? And then your second qu question should be, what is the air pressure?